Woody Allen once said, or I believe he once said, someone told me that he said this, that um, you don't have to be Jewish to like my movies, but it certainly helps. Um, I would say the same thing about uh, a certain movie. It's called The Messenger, 1999, story of uh, Jeanne d'Arc, Joan of Arc. Um, I would say that you don't have to be a recovering Catholic to enjoy that movie or to see it as something of a thunderbolt through you. Um, but it certainly helps. <laughs> and, and the movie is riddled with Catholic imagery and allusions to the Catholic versions of conscious, uh, conscience and Catholic versions of sin and uh, acting in this world. What are we supposed to do uh, to, be, to behave morally in this world? And, you know, through the jigs and the reels, um, we see Jeanne d'Arc, who is an idealistic woman, um, comes face to face with the difficulties of doing what is right in this world. Now, Socrates is, again, alleged to have said, it is impossible to know what is right and still do what is wrong. Uh, well, um, I don't think anyone ever sort of had a better riposte to that than Dustin Hoffman's character in... Um, in the messenger and they think that it was probably or it's never really said who he is at first people think he's the devil or maybe he's God or it's unclear it's probably just the other half of Joan's character that she's been ignoring all the time probably her conscience and uh, Socrates says it's impossible to know what is right and still do what is wrong and the conscience says who are you to even think you can know the difference between good and evil uh, that is a sort of the thunderbolt of the whole movie. Um, it shows that uh, the guilt-ridden Catholic attempts to do what is right in this world um, are in itself arrogance. Now that throws you into a moral quandary of the highest order. Uh, it sort of says, or if you see it in a certain way, it says it doesn't matter what you what your motives are. What you're doing is horrible, and it's causing all kinds of mayhem in this world, and your um, attempts to fix the problem are actually making everything worse, and it's still on you. It's still on your soul. It's still guilt on your head for all the things that you have done. You are guilty because you're not doing enough in this world to, um, to make the world a more better, a better and more godly place. And it's also on your head, because all of your attempts to do so have resulted in more misery. That is the sort of um, tipping point. That was the tipping point for me in a decisively abandoning Roman Catholicism about 30 years ago, I suppose. I hadn't reached the age of 20, but I faced that moral quandary, that it's impossible to, 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 to do this. It's impossible to be a moral agent in the world uh, all the time, <clears throat> because it's never clear what's right and what's wrong. The messenger, or the conscience in the movie, says in his famous quip, what you saw was a sword in a field. And Jeanne d'Arc uh, said, no, no, it was a sign from God. No, no, that won't do. What you saw is a sword in a field. That's why I tend to think that um, antinatalism and, and its ethical codes are as unworkable as anyone else's. In a previous video, I dealt in the previous video, I raised the subject of ethics, which inevitably leads to a discussion of law. Um, and I found that the difficulties in, um, in um, discussing the matter always come from the fact that people approach um, their entire view of the law in a completely different manner. Some people believe and hold that the law is there to prevent harm. It's to protect people, to uh, make people, um, to do the right thing in the world. I don't believe that it that that's the primary purpose of the law. I think that there's elements of that in there, but I think that the primary purpose of the law is to simply manage human society in the least damaging way. Now, we can sort of take an absolute sort of legal system, and the, the one that, I, I mean no disrespect to Muslims here, but the, the one that we're most familiar with in today's world is Sharia law, where most of the people that live under Sharia law like it, but or I wouldn't say most of them like it, but a lot of people who live under Sharia law like it. They say there, everything is clear, every moral choice is very, very clear, you don't have to think about or worry about anything. 
but if you're any kind of a deviant, we'll come down on you like a ton of bricks and not think twice about it. That's moral certainty in action. <clears throat> now, um, that's sort of the, uh, the moral-based um, law, system of law, that I think inevitably leads to totalitarianism. If we take a pragmatic view of law, i.e., law is there to manage human affairs, what you get is um, something like uh, exactly what the British legal system is always accused of doing, uh, is of being morally relativistic and changing all the time, and right and wrong is never what it was a hundred years ago. I think that the British way of, of doing law is about the only way that's ever going to actually work in the world. You have respect for the law because it is the law of the land, but you understand that the law is it has limitations and that sometimes it does what is moral, morally questionable. But the alternative uh, is, um, well, complete uh, destruction of society itself. No more rules for anything. That's always been my objection to pure libertarianism, is that, that you, know, you, you, can, you can dismantle society and watch what happens. Um, you can act and speak and uh, think as freely as you like in the world, but we still have to have rules to deal with each other, regardless of who's right and who's wrong. And the law, as often as not, fails to do the right thing. But it's still the law, and it's all that we've got, and we've got to deal within those uh, parameters. If we try to say that we're going to bring absolute morality and absolute certainty into the law, what you get is something like Sharia, where uh, there's a one-size-fits-all solution to absolutely everything, and everything, the entire thrust of the system is, moral choices are clear. You just have to think about them long enough. But to me, that's Jeanne d'Arc in The Messenger. And to me, sanity is the voice of the messenger. Who are you to even think that you know the difference between right and wrong? Watch what happens when you try to apply that kind of moral certainty uh, to the real world. Well, you get the gulag. You get Sharia. You get, yes, Auschwitz. You get Cambodia under the Khmer Rouge. You get some kind of hellish uh, totalitarian state because you'll, you're always going to have dissent. How do you manage dissent? How would an antinatalist type government manage dissent? Um, what would happen? I predict that if an antinatalist government came into office in a western country and tried to push its, push its agenda, what you would get is you'd probably get um, resistance and if the government then pushed its agenda harder. You would get stronger resistance, and as you kept pushing, then the, the, the resistance gets bigger, and then you get something like a revolution or a civil war, which is, if you ask me, a lose, 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 lose situation. What you've got to do, I suppose, um, the only way to bring antinatalism, antinatalism uh, into existence as a real-world philosophy or a real-world uh, practical option is to... Um, bring it in as a personal choice. Maybe your, your decision not to have kids um, isn't going to end harm in the world, but you're doing everything that is reasonably can be reasonably expected in your own personal life to end harm in the world. Harm is going to keep going. Harm is going to keep happening regardless. There's really no way to stop it. Uh, time has forever. Space is infinite. There's no way, unless you want to abolish the universe, that you're ever going to stop harm um, or stop the possibility of harm ever coming up again. We've got to understand what we are. Um, we have minds that can think freely, that can, that can speculate, that can philosophize, and that can go through all kinds of uh, exercises to help us cope with the world that, that's around us. Um, and we can draw conclusions where we find that the, that the world doesn't live up to what our versions of morally right and morally wrong are. Now what? <laughs> can we accept that fact and get called in some form or another a heretic or a counter-revolutionary or a backslider or whatever, uh, accept that as an inevitable byproduct of life and do whatever we can in the world, or do we just sort of freeze up and... Uh, say that, uh, well, there's nothing that I can do because this world doesn't make sense. Or, 
instead of freezing up, acting on uh, less than 100% moral certainty anyway. Pick up the sword in the name of someone who said that uh, turn the other cheek and blood and mayhem follows you everywhere but the means are justified by the ends. Well, we all know who, always, who said that sort of thing. That was the totalitarians. It's impossible to know what is right and still do what is wrong is an interesting aphorism, and I, I subscribe to that, to that aphorism, but it has a counterpart in the East, or I presume it's in the East. Be in the game, but not of the game. Reality is too crazy or too confusing, or simply reality is never convenient enough for absolute certainty, and attempts to impose absolute certainty on it are going to result in disaster. Thank you.